Hello and uh, welcome back to another section uh, a few exam review. This time we're going to do uh, mechanic material so let's get to work. We're going to do 20 problem. I do 10 problem and you do the other 10 problem and it will be a good practice for you. First problem is going to do we're going to do moment inertia I mean uh, shear moment diagram. So we have this simply supported beam and the only load we have is a 24 kip at 10 feet away from uh, support. Uh, the pin support and five feet away from the uh, um, roller support. When you take the exam, it is possible they might give you the reaction to make it easier and quicker for you. If you don't have the reaction, it takes two minutes to calculate the reaction. Let's go ahead and calculate the reaction first. I'm going to take a moment about point. If I do a free body diagram, I have one force here and one force here, and I got another force right there. And this be R B Y and R A Y. And then we know this is going to be zero because there's no any force going the other way. So let's take a moment about B equals zero going counterclockwise is positive. I'm going to save this color. Um, I'm going to start from this end, go that way. Uh, no, it's B, so I'm going from this end to this end. Uh, this cannot take a moment about that point because it's in a straight line in a action. The moment is a perpendicular distance between the force and the place you take in a moment. So now our AY is going to take a moment of point B and it's going to go clockwise. That means it's going to rotation going to be negative. Minus our AY times 15 feet. I have nothing else to try to get to this right here and this is going to take a counterclockwise. So it's positive plus 24 and that distance is a 5 equals 0. So our AY comes out to be 8 kips. So this is equal 8. No, I lied. This is equal 8 kips. If I do summation f of y is equal 0, going up is positive. I have 24 minus 8. That will give me uh, um, 16. It will be 8 minus 24 plus rby equals 0. So RBY is equal 16 kip. So this is a 16. These are very simple, really. I'm going to go ahead, go up 8. Uh, let me use different color here. So I'm going to go up at 8. Okay? Nothing happening, nothing happening until I get right here. And I'm going to drop 24. There's 8 of it, and there's a 16 of it. So this is a 16. And then I'm going to come back straight here. Nothing happened. I'll go up 16. And that's my shear diagram. Well, we have to go up another constant. So if this is a constant, we're going to go linear. And we're going to go ahead, uh, just go right here. Let's pick this point right there. And this is going like that. And what is the magnitude here? It's going to be the area of here. The area of this is basically, that's a 10 feet, right? 10 times 80, that makes it 80. So this has become <coughs> in this point right here become 80. And then this is going to be 16 times 5. That's going to make it 80. It's going to bring it back to 0. Now the question was, what is at point C right here? And what is at point E right here? Well, one way you can do it, you can say, okay, the easiest way really, just go ahead and come right here. As you say, point C was, uh, uh, this is a five feet right here. Uh, that's a five feet. Let's take that out. That's a 10 feet. So that's a five feet. It's got eight times five. That's 40. And they want to know what is right here. So I got 80 right here. And if I go ahead right there, that's a five feet. That's a two and a half. So two and a half, that's a 2.5 times 16 is, uh, uh, that's the same as uh, 40. So that's kind of 40 again. All right, let me erase this board. We're going to do the next problem. Here's the second problem right here. Uh, it's a simply supported beam. This time they're giving you the reaction, so it's, you don't have to calculate that. You just go ahead and draw the shear moment diagram. And let's get to work. First, we're going to go ahead, uh, go up by 36.8. So I'm going to come up right here. And that's at 36.8. Now I'm going to drop four feet, uh, four kip each foot as I'm coming down. 
So uh, I gotta find out uh, what distance is gonna become zero before I go ahead and do anything else. So I say, okay, 36 36.8 is equal when it's becoming zero at uh, four times what distance? So therefore, uh, 36.8 divided by four, that gives me 9.2. So at 9.2 right here, someplace 9.2 says this is 9.2, this is gonna come out to zero right here. There we go. And this distance is a 9.2 feet. But this is going to go up for another 0.8. That's going to come down right here. It's going to go down a little bit right here, 0.8, right there. And that's a 0.8 times 4. 0.8 times 4 is equal to 3.2. So this point right here, this value is a 3.2. Now, nothing happening until I get to this point right here, OK? So I'm going to go straight, nothing happened. Try to get right there. From there, i got to drop 8. So 8 plus 3.2 makes it 11.2. Uh, then nothing happened, and I go another. I'm going to drop another 8. And that's going to be 19.2. Uh, These are minus, by the way. And then I'm going to go across right here. And 19.2, I'm going to bring it back to zero. So this is my shear diagram. My moment is too close. Let me bring it back down a little bit here. OK, make this an MX. Now I'll go ahead and do the moment diagram. This is a linear. That means that's going to be a second degree curve. So uh, let's go ahead and. Bring these down here on all these points. So I'm going to be curved like this. Let me use a different color here. Um, it's going to be curved up there. And this magnitude is going to be the area right here. So this red is going to be uh, basically one half. That's a triangle. It's going to be 1 half, 36.8 times 9.2, which comes out to be uh, 169.3. Yep. And then it's going to drop again with the curve because it's uh, linear again. It's going to come down right here. And that area is going to be basically 3.2. Area of this triangle, 3.2 times um, one half time uh, this distance was 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and that's time one half for area triangle. And so almost 1.3, 1.28, or rounded up to 1.3. So this area become 168. That's plus. These are plus. And now it's constants here, so it's going to be linear. This area, it's going to be uh, um, 5 feet, 5 feet times 3.2. And that comes out to uh, 16. So 16 minus 168 is uh, 152. So this is going to be coming straight like this, and this is going to be 152, this point right here. Then it's going to drop again right here, and that is 11.2 uh, <coughs> times 5. It's a 56, taking 56 out of 152. It gave us a 96. So it's going to come up right here, and that's going to be 96. Then it's going to drop this portion, which is a 5 times 19.2. Uh, and 5 times 19.2 times 
should come out to really uh, 96. I don't even calculate that. You go ahead and figure it out if I'm lying or not. And that brings us right there, and that's our shear moment diagram. Okay, uh, the next two problems, you are going to do it, and when you do it, go ahead and put the answer, uh, if you can, on the uh, bottom of the uh, description. Let me erase this. Okay, the next problem it says uh, a composite cable has 180 uh, GPA diameter, one centimeter, original length is 150 centimeter. It's subjected to the following design requirement. Maximum elongation is a two millimeter, and allowable stress is a 400 uh, megapascal. What is the maximum permissible axial tension load on this cable? So this cable, how much force you can put on it? based on those two design criteria, which one's going to control. So if you go into your uh, handbook page, uh, I got to write it anyway, page uh, 31, you will find, uh, you know, stress is equal P divided by A. And the other one is that the uh, deflection elongation is given by equation uh, PL divided by AE. All we need to figure out these all this stuff, and we can go ahead and calculate it. So based on the stress is this, the question says that P over A, your stress should be less than or equal uh, 400 MPA. Okay, let's figure this out first. And uh, <coughs> we have uh, stress, we don't have load, we have area. So therefore, if I go ahead and take that equation, redo this equation, it's going to become, uh, if you put one right here, P is going to come out to stress time area. So that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to say, OK, uh, 400, P is equal, 400, that's our maximum we can go, time the area. Let's watch out for your unit. This uh, SI system, sometimes uh, if you use to imperial system, it can be really confusing, MPA. I mean, let's make it a Pascal, so it's multiplied by, uh, say, this is time by power 6, and now it's a Pascal, which is a Newton per meter square. And uh, then the area, it's going to be for the cable, uh, it's going to be pi divided pi r squared or pi divided by 4 uh, time uh, centimeter is what? It's uh, 1 centimeter diameter time uh, square be one centimeter is 0 0.01 meter square, okay? And that come out to uh, 31.4 kilonewton. Okay, so the next one we're going to say, okay, what about based on uh, elongation? The elongation says P should be less than or equal. Um, Again, taking this formula, rearranging it, it becomes basically AE times the deflection or elongation. I just even the same thing anyway. And divided by L. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and say, OK, P is equal. Uh, area is going to be, uh, let me do this in color so I'm going to mix with the other one. It's going to be pi divided by 4. 0.01 square. E is given as a, uh, for this, I think it's given a problem, 29, uh, 180. 180, 10 by power 9. Let me look at the problem again. Uh, yeah, 180 GPA, so that's basically, that's what it is. And then time, they said the maximum we want to go is a, a 2 with 0.002. 2 millimeter. Uh, that become 0 0.002 meter. And divide that by length. The length of the uh, uh, is 150 centimeters. So that become 1.5 meter. 1.5 meter. And this answer is going to come out to be uh, 1855 kilonewton. So this is our answer right there.
So we have a bar right here, and if you look at this bar, it has a 2 by uh, 2 cross section, 2 by 2. And they want to know what is the tensile strength for that. Well, that's easy. Stress of T is equal P divided by A. And uh, how much load is on it? Uh, 95 kips. So we're going to say, OK, 95. The cross-sectional area is going to be 2 times 2. It's going to be 4 inch square. And that's going to give us 23.8 um, KSI. Very easy. The next question, B, says, uh, find out the tensile stress of the material, of the member. If the member is a structural steel, oh, okay. What if the uh, member is a W8 by 31? Okay, so if it's a W, same load, is it going to be on this bar or is it going to be on a I shape uh, cross section of a W8 by 31? It's the same equation, n n no, it's nothing. So stress is equal, tension stress is equal, P divided by A. Now I've got to find out the area of this. It's easy. If you go into uh, in your handbook, you can they have a list of all this. So the area for this handbook is given A is equal um, 9.13 for uh, W8 by 31. So that's going to become 95 divided by 9.13. And that will give us a stress of 10.41. Obviously, this is stronger, has less stress in it. The thing about the FE exam is you got to know what these things are in your uh, handbook. You just go in there two seconds. This problem should really take you like 20 seconds. All right, let's go to the next problem. So you do the next problem. And uh, no, I will do the next problem. And there it is. It says, uh, uh, determine the tensile stress in each of the segment of the bar shown, segment AB and segment uh, has the uh, cross-sectional area 2 inch by 2 inch, and a segment BC, which is the smaller one, has a cross-sectional area 1.75 inch. The tensile load is going to be applied to 75 uh, kips. Again, uh, the area of AB, I'm going to say, OK, area of AB is equal, uh, it's a square, is not? So that's uh, a 4 inch square. 4 inch squared, the second piece, which is uh, has a 1.75 diameter. OK, that's a round bar. So this one is going to be easy. Uh, basically, it's going to be um, stress AB is equal P divided by A. They be questioned like this. They're very easy. You should be able to nail this one, no problem. And that's a 75 kips divided by 4. And that will give us um, 18.75 KSI. I had my student in the past that they taken this uh, exam. Actually, they had one she just passed it uh, uh, two weeks ago. She said this mechanic material was the uh, one was easiest for her because she studied everything and she got all of them. So you need to get every single one of these and the mechanic material. It's not that hard. And you can see it like that. And now we're going to do a stress BC. The problem with the BC is we just have to say, OK, 75 divided by pi divided by 4 times 1.75 squared. And uh, that's going to be 31.1 uh, KSI. See how easy this was? 10, 20 seconds. You see a lot of problems. You might see some problems like this. You probably have two, three problems on this topic easily. And make sure you get them all. Every point count. OK, so now you're going to go ahead and do problem number 9, which is on a board. And do problem number just 9. Now I'll do number 10. Um, OK, it says calculate the allowable torque that can be applied to the circular shaft. The allowable shear stress is 83 uh, megapascal. Assume that the shaft is a solid and has a 150 millimeter diameter. That's part A. Part B, assume that the shaft is hollow. The outside diameter is 150, and inside diameter is 125. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, come over here in this corner. That's problem number 10. Number 10 right here. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to first, we're going to go to go to page 134 of your handbook. And from there, we're going to go ahead and uh, for uh, uh, 
Then you go to page 111. 111, and we're going to find page 111. We're going to find uh, uh, polar moment inertia, which is given. All right, let's do this problem. I, I did it, and I had a, uh, had a mistake, and I came back. I had to correct it. That's why I wrote it down. First, we're going to go ahead and go to page, one, page 134. The equation is given right here for uh, uh, a shear, a uh, torsion shear. And we need to calculate the uh, polar moment inertia. You go into page 111, and this is the equation for polar moment inertia. And basically plug in, and you get this number. Then from here, we're going to rewrite this equation because we look and we have this. They already given us this. This is a 75 newton per meter meter square. We're going to find this uh, um, uh, torque moment right here. And that's a T time rate just divided by J. So we redo the uh, equation. It's going to become TR is equal TJ divided by R. And we plug it in, and we get this number. Now, question number B uh, says, what if it's hollow? If it's hollow, so it's going to go ahead and divide this by one th by 32 here again. Um, and that's going to be basically uh, pi times 150 minus uh, 125. And that's by power 4. That's by power 4 divided by 32. And that will give us 25.7. Uh, 25.7 um, 25 times 10 by power. Six. Do the same thing. TR is the same equation. Is equal uh, uh, allowable shear, allowable uh, torsion shear divided by uh, radius, and that comes out to be um, eighty-three time twenty-five point seven ten by power six divided by the radius, which is seventy-five, and that's going to come out to twenty-eight. Point four ten by power six. You see, this problem wasn't that hard, but you would look at it first. You look at it, you get scared of it, and you say, "Now nah, I'm just going to guess at it." But no, really, it's just all oh, these two equations. That's it. Plug in in two equations. You should do this less than one minute. Don't be afraid of it. It's easy. You can do this. You can pass this test with flying color. I have faith in you. All right, that was question number ten. You're going to do question number eleven, and I'm going to go ahead and raise this. Get to question number 12. The next problem is uh, they want to know uh, what is the bending moment. Uh, no, uh, the bending stress for the uh, uh, simply supported beam given uh, as shown. So the equation for bending stress, I have done many video on this, is equal stress is equal, or F and B we usually call them, but in here we call them stress. That, that's how they show it. It's MC over I, or a lot of times they say, my over i same thing and basically uh, you look at the whole beam let me come over here if you got the beam leg here and and the beam designer this done this quite a bit so you, if you're interested in watch those this distance right this they call it c and this is basically whatever the cross section is say this is a, has a cross sectional i and that's your neutral axis basically and the stress is highest at the uh, compression here, at tension here. And this distance is called y. But if you go from to the uh, most outer section, they call it c. So before we go ahead, we need to find out, we got to find what c is, what m is, what i is, all those individual. For, uh, if you go to the uh, beam formula table, and uh, that is on page uh, 140. Uh, so the bending equation is at page 135 of your handbook. Uh, the moment table is going to be on page 140. And from there, you can find out the maximum moment. It's going to be m is equal w l squared divided by 8 for uh, uh, uniformly distributed load uh, simply supported. And let's calculate that. So that was given as a 5 kilonewton per meter. 5 kilonewton per meter time length is uh, 6 meter. Square that and divide that by eight, and that will give us the um, twenty-two point five. Twenty-two point five kilonewton meter. The next thing I want to find out is the moment inertia of the cross section. We done that in a uh, static, so it's uh, you need to learn how to do moment inertia. I guarantee you, hundred percent of your question on it. So let's just practice this. A is equal uh, one twelve uh, bh cube 
for rectangular shape and you look at this uh, shape i shape is made from three different rectangular and plus ad square but before you do that you have to find out what the center of the shape is and uh, in here they already given it to you which is basically halfway through that's easy so i'm going to go ahead and calculate those all three shapes because the bottom shape and the top shape are symmetrical so i'm just going to go ahead okay i'm going to say two time both the bottom and top shape and that's going to be the uh, uh the web on top basically uh not a good drawing but this and this these two okay so I'm gonna say two times those two shapes two times uh, one divided by 12 my B for here is given it's a 250 so um, let's convert that to meter so it's gonna be 0.25 meter and then H is gonna be the height this height right here which is given as 20 millimeter and that's we're going to become a uh, 0.02 meter 0.02 meter really the hardest part for people in the United States is converting this from meter to millimeter whatever uh, they give them as yeah and then plus ad square plus ad square and um, it's going to be the area it's going to be 0 0.25 times 0 0.2 0 0.25 times uh, point uh, O2 what is it O2 point O2 and uh, a d squared d squared is going to be uh, so the distance right here is 150 and if I go up another distance that's going to make it 160 so that's become 160 and I my d squared is going to be point one six uh, squared and that was basically given for those two shapes, this shape and this shape. Now we're going to do this, this shape right there. And that's basically because the center of it is right, the center of the shape, so there's no AD squared. Plus 112B, it's going to be the uh, width, it's right, uh, 0.02, uh, 0 0.02, and time 0 0.3. Uh, it's going to be the, uh, and that's going to be cube. So that's going to come out to be uh, 301.3 times 10 by mm, power negative 6 uh, meter fourth. Double check my calculation here. Let me double check it myself right here. Two so now you have all the information your FAB or what do you call them stress is equal M is equal 22.5 kilonewton meter divided times C and C it's going to be basically uh, 170 in here C is going to be from here to the most outer uh, part both tension and compression so that's 0.17 um, then divided by i, and i came out to 301.3 times 10 by negative 6. 12.7 megapascal. Do this calculation, see if you get this number. Okay, the next question is you, well, I'll ask the board here. Okay, the next question says determine the shear stress at point B on the web of the uh, cantilever stress. So they're looking for transverse shear <coughs> in that section. And if you remember, you can go in a, a handbook and find these also. But uh, let me show you this PowerPoint I have. The equation is given is that we're looking for shear is VQ divided by IT. Uh, v is the shear uh, force, and we know what is Q. Q is the basically... Uh, the first moment of area between the location where the shear stress is being calculated and also the location where the shear stress is zero about the neutral axis. So that's what we're looking for. For example, if you look at those two different shapes we have, we got shape uh, number one, which is a T-shape, and you, we were looking for shear stress between the T-shape and, and a straight shape, where I have it in a red mark. So uh, the Q we're looking for is basically um, 
y prime time a prime. Then we have to calculate the area of the a, uh, uh, of the shape that we want to get the shear stress between them. And um, really, the time consuming about this problem is you have to find both the uh, 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 neutral axis and the moment inertia, and the rest of them is a plug-in. And then um, your a prime is the area between where the, the uh, stress has been calculated, which I had talked about it already. So let's go ahead and do the problem. And going back to the problem itself, it shows uh, we have, uh, so the equation is uh, shear stress is equal to V QB divided by IT. I don't know any of this stuff. I gotta figure out. Let's figure out what V is gonna come out to be. So if I do a, a free by diagram, it's gonna, I'm gonna, gonna have a shear stress here, normal stress here, and a moment. I don't care about these two. I don't wanna figure this shear out. Shear is basically is these two combined. Two plus four is equal to six kilonewton. So V is equal to six kilonewton. And that was the easy part. Um, the next thing I want to find out, I need to find out where is my uh, neutral axis is so I can find my y bar. And uh, we know that it, from that equation before, y bar is equal to summation of ay divided by the summation of area. Quickly we do that, and that's going to be, um, take a look at this area. It's going to be 0 0.02 times 0 0.05. That's basically the area of this one right here. And then multiply by our y bar. If we go from x from here, then from the center here to here, it's going to be 0 0.01. 0 0.01. And uh, that's going to be time uh, 0 0.05 times 0 0.02. And then we're going to have a plus. And we plus plus here. Um, Shape number two, the area is going to be 0 0.02 times 0 0.07. And the distance from center of this shape to uh, the bottom here, it's going to be, so that's going to be 35 plus 20 be 55. 0 0.055, the area is 0 0.02 times 0 0.07. So that will give me uh, 0 0.03625. So now we know where that is. We can find the moment inertia. This be a good practice, this uh, session, to really practice your moment inertia. We've been doing a lot of them. 112 uh, bhq plus ad squared, which is the same formula there. I'm just going to go ahead and plug number in. Uh, it's going to be 112 times 0.05 and times 0.02 cube uh, plus a is uh, 0.05 times 0.02 and d squared is going to be basically uh, this number 0 0.03625 minus. Uh, 0.01, and that's a square plus the second shape is going to be 112 v is a 0 0.02 h is 0 0.07 cube plus the area is going to be 0 0.02 times 0 0.07 times uh, the center of this shape we thought was 55, remember? 0.55 minus 0 0.03625. That's a zero right here. And that's a square. So that one should give me 1.78. 6, 10 times uh, by power 10 minus 6 meter fourth. Now, we want to find y prime b because we want to find Q. The Y prime B, B is right here. So the Y prime is going to be basically from the center right here to there. It's going to be 0 0.03625 minus uh, 0 0.01. That's center. And that's going to become um, 0 0.0265. So this our y prime b is going to be right here. 
And now we're looking for Q and A prime. A prime is the basically area of the uh, this right here, 0 0.02 time 0 0.05. And, but anyway, let's go ahead and just say Q is equal uh, Y prime time A prime, so it's 0 0.0265 time 0 0.02 time 0 0.05, and that will give me uh, 26.25 time 10 by power uh, negative 6 cubic meter. And my shear stress is going to be basically. Uh, Shear is going to be uh, VQB divided by IT, and we have all that information now. And that became 6,000. Remember, it was a 6 kilonewton. And multiplied by Q, Q became 26.25 times 10 by negative 6, which is up there. And divided by I, I came out to be 1.78 times 10 by negative 6. And the thickness of it is basically. Uh, 0.02. So that comes out to become 4.41 megapascal in PA. So this is how it's done. Um, you will, all right, this problem is really a unique one because it's kind of, um, my when I was a young engineer between 1986 and 19, uh, 90. I worked on my first two job was on a, a railroad bridge, and that's why I like this problem. And I worked on a railroad. I, I loved it. And I hope for all you young engineers that are doing this, I really have a one big wish for all of you. You will have a wonderful career like I did. I enjoyed civil engineering. I really enjoyed every minute of it. A lot of project, a lot of great people. Some here, some not here. God bless them. But it was wonderful. It was a wonderful life as a civil engineer. And it's great to be a teacher right now to teach you guys. This is really not that hard. It's easy. You can pass with the flying color. But let's do this problem. It's kind of fun. So we have this railroad tie. And then you have the train, both wheel right there. And they weigh about 34 kips each. And these are kips. On, uh, and I push on the railroad tie. The reaction, you don't have it. It's not a simple beam support. So you put one here, one here. The whole entire thing become a reaction because it's on a bed of a crushed stone. And then we have to find out what is this W going to come out? The reaction force is going to come up, and this is the uh, ground. Really, it's easy. We're just going to go ahead and apply the uh, summation FOI is equal to zero. It's all the equation, and we have 2 times 34 on top, and that should be minus uh, W times 6 feet. And our W should come out to. Uh, 11.3 kip per foot. So this is 11.3 kip per foot. Now it says if they're subjected to the, the question, was a question? The question says uh, calculate the maximum shear stress in the tie section of section AA, which is a, the tie is about six feet, uh, six inch by eight inches, and which is located just to the left of the uh, rail. Of this section right here. So if I take this section right here, okay, I have, um, I'm going to instead of all this, I'm going to replace with one force, and that's going to be 11.3 um, times 1.5, because this is 1.5. And this whole thing right here. So the concentrated load will be 11.3 times 1.5, and that should give me 17 kips. Okay? And then the next thing I have really is I got 34 right here. And if I cut it right here, we got, I got to replace it with the uh, three forces. Remember that? Uh, we're going to replace them with a uh, normal force, shear force, and a moment. So we just care about the shear force itself right here, which we call this V. And uh, obviously, summation FOI is equal to 0. So my V is equal to uh, 34 minus 17, and which is equal to 17 kips. So this is my shear become uh, 17 also.
So if I look at the cross section, which is a, if we go ahead and cut it in half, it's going to be A prime is going to be right here, and that's the shear we're going to look for. So our Q max is going to be uh, Y prime, A prime, and our Y prime is basically halfway here, so it's one and a half. And A prime is a three times eight. And that should give us a 36 inch cube. And our shear max is going to become uh, V Q max divided by I T. So that is a 17,000 pound time 36 divided by I T. Uh, I T, I, I is, let's do a quick I right here. Uh, 112 uh, B is uh, 8. H is uh, 6 cube, and that is equal 144. So time 144, and our thickness is basically, uh, this whole thing is an 8 inch thick. And that will give us uh, 531 PSI. It's a cool problem. Is, uh, it says uh, find the deflection. Uh, there is a beam formula on uh, page 140. It's on the board. Take a look at it. Make sure you know what that is. This is really easy. Just you take the formula and you plug it in. Based on that, it says that the maximum deflection delta max is equal um, PL cube divided by uh, 48 EI. And all that information is given to you. It says the force is at 30 kilonewton at the center uh, at, at the center of a five meter span. Shown what is the maximum deflection. So everything is given to you. So is equal really P is equal uh, uh, 3,000 and L is a uh, five cubic meter and then 48. The EI is given as a two. Time 10 by 11, and so is the moment inertia at 3 times. Uh, your moment inertia is uh, given as 3 times 10 by minus 4, and that will give you a 1.33 millimeter. One thing you have to be careful, the moment inertia in this problem, it was given in the form of, uh, I was given as 3 times 10 by power 8, millimeter fourth. You got to convert this to a meter fourth. Everything has to work out. So if you divide this by one meter is 1,000 millimeter. So divided by 1,000 by power four, you should get that number right there. All right. See this how easy this was? 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you should get this problem and save you time and uh, you can figure it out. The only thing hardest part is to find out the formula, beam formula, on page uh, um, 140. Here's the next one. It's a little bit different. So if you go back same page 140, you want to find the beam formula. We're going to say use the same thing. Okay, so deflection is equal, uh, or V, they show it there. Uh, it comes in different books. They have a different uh, uh, letter for it. It's minus P. Bx divided by uh, 6 Ei L. And then it says multiply by, uh, markers quitting on me, uh, multiply by uh, L squared minus B squared minus X squared. And it says uh, for X less than A. Okay. So question A on this one says, uh, what is it in the mid span? And we have two, we have one at 20 and we have one 30. So we have two different situations. So I'm going to say uh, V20 or delta 20, I'm calling it called delta, or so you can say V20, whatever, is equal. Uh, for V20, uh, we have... Uh, for V20, we got uh, A is equal 5, 
B is equal to L is equal 7 and our X is equal 3.5. So all I'm going to do is a plug in uh, V20. Uh, it's not a V, it's kind of just say delta. Delta 20 is equal, um, P was 20,000, so 20,000, and then uh, 20 kilonewton, time 2, time 3.5, and divided by 6 EI, and that's time L is a 7. And uh, now we have time. L squared became uh, 7 squared minus 2 squared minus 3.5 squared. And that will give me uh, 109,167 divided by EI. Now for 30 kips, and it's going to be 30,000. For 30 kips, let's just go ahead and do the, uh, I'm going to come over here. Delta 30, uh, the, uh, we're going to have uh, A is equal 5.5, B is equal 1.5. Take a look at it and try to figure it out. There's nothing to it. L is equal 7 and X is equal 3.5. If you look at the uh, beam formula, and you can basically, really simple, just put those uh, in because you could look from one end for the 30, and then you're looking for 20 from the other end, and that's why we figured these out. So now all I got to do is plug in. It's going to be 30,000, 30 kips for 30,000 uh, kilonewton. Okay, time, uh, um, we said A was 5.5. So it's 1.5, 1.5, then time uh, x is equal 3.5 still, for both of them, should be the distance between both of them, and divided by 6 ei times 7, that's the same, times 7 squared minus 1.5 squared and minus 3.5 squared, and that answer is going to come out to 129,375, divided by EI. Um, that was, uh, you do the next two problem, and there's a problem number 19. It's a similar to what I did, and uh, when you find the answer, put the answer in the bottom of the, bottom of the description so somebody else can see it also. And there's a problem number 20. Uh, good luck to you. Keep studying two, three hours a day. It's nothing to it. You will pass.